This is the 1000 point force for the Cities of Sigmar and Vulgar today. It's a force you've seen before, you know it, I love it. This is Karina and her brother Karsten and their Reddit news. We have got 20 Dread Spears with uh, banners and full command, 20 Dark Shards, banners and full command, Karsten who is a Dreadlord on Black Dragon and Karina who is a Sorceress on Black Dragon. Karsten is the General, he is a Secret of Warlock which means that he knows a spell and that spell is going to be Vitrolic Spray which has got a 6 inch range, 8 plus to cast and negates a unit's save completely. He has also got the artifact the Drake Scale Cloak, gives him a 5 plus shrug and the mount trait is Acidic Blood which means wounds that are caused to this model splash back and inflict mortal wounds on the opposing player on a 4 plus. And that is the 1000 point force of Anvil Guard. And then this is 1,000 points of Hidden Knights of Slaanesh and of course leading the charge is going to be Sigvald the Magnificent himself. He is the shard of the world that was. He is who has been whispering to Karina. Alongside him and the General of the Force is going to be this Lord of Pain. This is a Pretender's host so he is the General, the only General. He has got the two command traits, uh, one which is strongest alone which means that he is uh, able to reroll hits because he is, if he's outside of six inches of another hero. And he's also got the Hunter of God Beasts uh, command ability which gives him the plus one doesn't give him plus one anything, sorry. Yes, it gives him plus one damage against uh, monsters. So he's going to be pretty nifty against those dragons. He's also got the artifact, the Pendant of Slaanesh, I believe it's called, which allows him to heal D3 wounds at the start of every hero phase. We've also got a Shard Speaker of Slaanesh with the Twisted Myrrh. We have got five Myrmidesh Painbringers. And then we've got two units of Hell Striders, one with the Stabby Stab Spears and one with the Hell Scourge whips. And that is 1,000 points. Focusing in 1,000 points, Head and Knights of Slaanesh. Welcome to the channel and welcome to the final battle report in the Shard of the World It Was campaign between Karina and the Hidden Knights of Slaanesh, led by none other than Prince Sigvald the Magnificent himself. He has come from the world that was, he is out here to ravage, to pillage. He has been calling to her, despoiling her slumber and beckoning a champion to come forth. Someone that will be worthy uh, to fall by his blade. So. He has been the main villain throughout all of this. He has drawn all of these forces together, whispering to them all in the hopes of finding a champion worthy of being slain. So we have the Hidden Knights of Slaanesh arrayed in a nice lineup here. We have Karina and her brother and their retinues ready to go. This is a straight up game. Uh, the winner is going to be determined by who either kills Karina. So if Karina falls, or will it be Sigvald the Magnificent? Without any further ado, let's pick up some dice and roll off for the first turn. As always, the red dice for Karina, the blue dice for the opposing side, and it is going to be Hidden Knights of Slaanesh are going to take the first turn. Let's see what they do. Start of the hero phase and the only thing to do is to try and cast a Mystic Shield with this Shard Speaker onto Sigvald because everything is going to go to Sigvald because he is magnificent. Cast on a 6. That is going to go off on a 6. Karina is much too far away to try and deny that. So Sigvald is going to be mystically shielded and also the Shard Speaker will be able to use his uh, shadow cloaked claws, uh, her shadow cloaked claws. I'm not sure if this character is male or female. I'm not sure if any of Slaanesh know they are male or female. Anywho, that's it for the hero phase. Let's do some movement with this very fast force. 
very simple movement phase for the Hidden Knights of Slaanesh. The Hell Flayers, Hell Striders, sorry, have just uh, run forward. Whatever noise their creatures make echoing through this cavernous uh, domain. The Painbringers uh, ran up, rolled a 1 first of all, so they spent their command point to reroll that to get a 6, to run 12, getting them up into dominating position in the centre of the battlefield. The three heroes, Sigvald holding up the rear, no doubt uh, shouting at his minions to go and see how worthy a foe has actually come and should he bother to uh, wet his blade against them. And the same on the other side here with these Hellstriders just running forward, getting into position, hoping perhaps for a double turn. But Slanesh is all about speed and hitting hard. Let's see if they can do it. With no shooting and no charges, it's going to go over to the cities of Sigmar, Karina and her brother. Let's see what they do in their turn one. Karina and her brother have hidden agents, as always, so they are going to get D3 extra command points. For one extra command point in the first turn, they're going to have two. Start of the hero phase, and Karina is going to spend one of their two command points to command underlings this unit, making them be able to run and still shoot, which should be instrumental in getting them all in range to hopefully stem the tide of this uh, screeching head and out force. And then she's going to attempt to cast Mystic Shield on herself because she's probably going to need it if uh, Sigvald is anywhere near. And she's going to fail on a four. That does not go off. Nothing for Karsten to do in the hero phase. So we're going to go on to movement. End of the movement phase and command points have had to be spent again. This unit only rolled a one for their first uh, run roll trying to get up into prime position, spent a command point to reroll it, and they rolled a 2, so they've only managed to get here, and the back rank are not in range of this unit of Hell Striders, so that is going to be a significant dip to their shooting ability. The Dread Spears, however, fared a bit better, they got a 6, so they managed to shimmy up to here, uh, not charging this turn, but presenting a wall of shield and steel to hold off... Uh, and no doubt an impending charge from this head and out force and Karsten himself has arrived on the flank and he's looking down to probably start munching on some of these chaotic minions so with that movement phase concluded we're going to go into some shooting now we're going to do uh, Karsten's breath first of all the noxious breath from Karsten's uh, dragon into this unit only one in range and on six Nope, nothing there. So let's pick up some dice now for these uh, dark shards firing into the head and night line. 15 are in range of these Hell Striders. Guardmaster is going to shoot first. Uh, they get plus one to hit because there's more than 10 of them. So he's going to hit on twos. And he hits twice, just. And then we're going to have 28 dice. Then I'm going to pause and pick these up. 28 dice hitting on threes. 28 dice hitting on threes. Let's take out the misses. 17 hits uh, from the regular guys plus the two from the guard master is 19 hits in total and these are going to wound on fours. Again let's pick out some misses. Eight wounds in total against these hell striders. No rend and they do have a four up save. Uh, they pass three, so they're going to take five damage. Two wins each, which is one, two, and one takes wins. Two of them fall. I'm going to take this guy here. And one of them takes a wound. The guy in the back. With the Dark Shard unleashing their volley and whittling down some of the Hell Striders, we're moving in now to the charge phase and Karsten is going to charge into this unit of Hell Striders. He is just over five inches away, so he needs a five to get in within half an inch. He's going to fail on a three. He doesn't have any command points left to reroll, so he's just going to flap flap there. And that is it for this turn. 
Not the strongest start from the Cities of Sigmar. Lackluster enough shooting, not getting into the position that they should have been in. And Carson feeling that charge could come back to bite them in the proverbial rear. But there's a Battleshock test that's needed over here. However, they also gain a depravity point for having a unit. Doesn't matter which unit, friend or foe, are losing uh, wounds and models. So that means one depravity point will be gained and the Slaneshi forces, the more they cut themselves, the more Slaanesh listens and the more Slaanesh might decide to intervene and might decide to help out with a few more minions. Hellstriders have a bravery of six. Hellstriders are normally a leadership of six because this unit has a banner which brings them up to leadership eight. That means that they don't have to take a morale check, a battle shock test having lost uh, two models. So, with that done, we're just going to go straight into the roll-off for Battle Round 2. Blue dice for the Slaneshis, red dice for Karina. It is a tie. It's going to resume the way it is. Slaanesh is going to come crashing forward into the Cities of Sigmar lines. Will they be able to hold them off? Let's find out. In the hero phase, again, the only thing to do because all the other spells are still out of range is this shard speaker is going to this time put Mystic Shield into these pain bringers just to make them a little bit more durable. Let's pick up two red dice, why not? And that is going to be cast on a six, goes off on each 11. Karina will try and deny on a 12. No, so these guys will be mystically shielded for this turn. And now we're going to move on to that all important movement phase. End of the Hedda Knights of Slaanesh movement phase in Battle Round 2 and all hell is about to break loose. The Mervidish Painbringers and the Hell Striders have come up within 3 inches of the Shinhood of uh, Dreadspears and they are going to of course charge in. The General, the Painbringer, is going to try a long bomb charge against Karsten, probably suicide, but that is what the Hedda Knights of Slaanesh do. This unit has moved up, uh, spinning a command point for Sigvald to run because uh, even though he's very tall and basically a demon prince, he moves very slowly. Uh, anyway, the shard speaker ran up, got a six, managed to get here, and now they are going to use their ability, which is used in the shooting phase on a unit within nine inches. This unit is within 9 inches, and on a 3+, plus, it, there's plus 1 to wind rolls against that unit for the rest of this turn. And on a 3+, plus, that goes off, it is going to be plus 1 to wind those dark shards. Oh my, oh dear. Let's move into some charges. Let's do them now on camera. Both of these units needing a 3. The Painbringers, first of all. They get a 12, they'll be able to wrap around the side. And then the unit of Hellstriders feel their charge and no command points to reroll. So they actually just stand still. But a 12 inch charge from the Painbringers. Let's see where they end up. And we need a long bomb charge from this guy in the backfield. He gets a five, that's not enough. No command points to reroll that. So only the Mermanesh Painbringers getting in. And of course this unit, let's not forget them. Uh, and they are just going to make it on a four. At the end of the charge phase, it looks a bit like this. These uh, Hellstriders have come crashing into the Dark Shards, and the Painbringers managed to wrap around the Dark Shards, getting under their flank, and hopefully mitigate the torrent of attacks from those spears that could come into them. Could be a bit of trouble. That field charge was a big one. These two units were supposed to work in tandem. But uh, obviously, these um, Hedonites are not ready and they want to maybe look on and laugh uh, at the display or watch in awe, perhaps, at the, the display that these Mermidish Painbringers are going to perform for them. Because Slaanesh is all about pageantry and all about applause and yeah, this, this makes narrative sense that they would do feed them one at a time to see which of them is actually the favorite of Slaanesh, which one actually can perform the perfect kill. So let's start with the Mermidesh Painbringers. 
They have got 11 attacks because they have two attacks each and there is a pain master. They are going to hit on threes and sixes to hit are an additional hit because they are hidden knights. So that is going to be seven hits and three, two sixes, which make nine hits in total. They're going to wound on threes and sixes to wound are going to be a mortal wound in addition. And there's two sixes there, and some failures. So those are two mortal wounds in addition. So two of them have already perished. And then there's going to be six saves at minus one. So six five up saves, which is going to be two passed. So that is four damage going through. Coupled with the two mortal wounds is going to be six of those dread spears brought down. Six Dread Spears brought down. Now we're going to move over to the Dark Shards who are going to pile in and attack with their daggers on fives and fives. So let's see some pile-ins. Dark Shards are hitting ten attacks. Ten of them managed to get in uh, one inch range. So fives and fives. Now that is three hits. And then fives again. One wound, one four up save. Save has gone through. One of these guys is wounded as well, I forgot about that. So now let's move on to these Hell Striders attacking. And ignore that last roll because this unit is equipped with Hell Scourges, which have got the Hook Tendrils rule, which means they subtract <coughs> enemy units, subtract one to hit rolls against them, uh, which meant that it would have been sixes to hit, but nothing went through enemy, so it doesn't really matter. Anywho, these units, there is three of them left one of them is the hell reaver so they have two attacks each means they're going to have seven attacks and they're hitting with their hell scourges on threes and they're normally wounding on fours but thanks to the twisted mur they're wounding on threes so that is three wounds against those dark shards three five up saves boom dark shards say no <laughs> so that didn't go through and then we're going to roll six attacks with the poison tongue hitting on twos uh, hitting on threes sorry beg your pardon so that's three hits and then we're going to wound on threes because of the plus one to wound two wounds go through two five up saves one dark shard is going to fall that has been a very poor showing, but it is a depravity point. It is a depravity point. Let's see <clears throat> what the final combat of this turn is going to do. These Dread Spears are going to pile in. 14 of them left. One of them is the Guard Master, so that is 15 attacks. There's still more than 10. They're hitting on threes. Sixes to hit are special. So three sixes. Let's put those aside. And lift out this torrent of misses. Uh, well, that's 10 hits so far. That's not too bad. Those sixes to hit are going to be rend minus one. So let's roll these to wound first of all. The seven to wound uh, on fours. So that is four regular saves and then four. Yep, yeah, so four and rend minus one and four regular saves. So let's do the four at a four up first of all, because this is re-rollable, thanks to the Painbringer Shields, and they pass them all. Excellent, and then these five ups are also re-rollable. Failed them all. Failed two, two wins each. One of those Mermanish Painbringers is dead, and that is another depravity point. And with that, it is into the Battle Shock phase. No Battle Shock needed here uh, for either unit because no Hellstriders died and only one Dark Shard died. Uh, over here, the Mermidish Painbringers are fine. They only lost one, their Bravery 7. But there were six lost for the Dread Spears. So they are Leadership Bravery 7 at the minute. And on a one, they are fine. They are holding their nerve. No one is running away, but there is one, two, three more depravity points for the forces of Slanesh, taking them up to four. They're getting close to be able to summon something onto this battlefield. But it's now turn two for Karina. Let's see what her and Karsten can do.
into the hero phase and the only thing to do is to bank the command point, use it for something later on because both of these forces are engaged so there's no point commanding anyone to run shit. Carson is going to, because he's just within six inches of this unit of hell uh, striders. What are, what are they called exactly? Yeah, it is hell striders. There's striders, seekers, flares. There's there's too much hell in this army uh, to keep up with. He's going to try and cast uh, Vitrolic Spray just to negate their save because uh, because they can cast on an eight. That goes off on an eight. The shard speaker will try and deny that and fails. So those hell striders currently do not have a save until the next hero phase. And Karina is then going to cast. Uh, what is she going to cast? She's going to cast Blade Wind. She's going to cast it. Oh, is she within 18 of those guys? Oh my. She is. So Karina is going to cast Blade Wind, her signature spell, which is cast on a 6. And that goes off on a 12. It can't be denied. So these are just going to be 9 mortal wounds because that unit currently doesn't have a save. 9 mortal wounds. Ouch. That is a brutal spell. One Hellstrider left with one wound of the champion left. Um, no doubt laughing as his uh, friends and uh, compatriots just get sort of torn to ribbons around him. But that is it for the hero phase. Karina and Karsten using their magic in tandem to take out one of these threats. Now let's see what they can do in the movement phase. End of the movement phase looks like this. Karina, uh, not being a card but being tactical, has flown over here to assume command of this side of the battlefield. Meanwhile, Karsten moves outside of three inches of this uh, bringer of pain, pain bringer. He's going to charge him. Hopefully, uh, his dragon will munch on his bones and stay in lock in combat with these two forces here. I'm going to move into the shooting phase now. Noxious Breath on a six will do a mortal wound does do a mortal wound but he can shrug it I think on a five let me double check it's not just in combat no it is negated on a five but if it's negated with a close combat attack it does a mortal wound back to uh, the unit that was attacking him so it's kind of like the acidic blood that's on Carson's dragon uh, there you go other shooting loads of dice into these hell striders let's see if they survive. Shooting phase, lots of dice into the hell strategy. Guardmaster, it's on twos, hits twice, picking up all of these dice, picked up all of these dice, rolling all of these dice, hitting on threes because there's still more than ten of them. Gonna pause, pick through the misses. Out of 38 shots, only seven missed. That's 31 hits onto that unit. Gonna pick them all up, wounding on fours. Wounding on fours. And let's pick through the fields. 17 wounds, that. That's a good showing. These are going to then be saved on four pluses. And that is two, three, that is enough to kill them because one of them was wounded anyway. These Hellstriders are no more. The Hellstriders are no more freeing up those dark shards. However, that is definitely going to be two more depravity points for the forces of Slaanesh, taking them up to six. So summoning will be able to happen in their next turn. Let's move on to the charges. Karsten is going to charge into that Bringer of Pain. He's going to get in there on a 9. There's nothing that Bringer of Pain can do as that dragon goes charging in towards him. So, with him moved in, let's choose some combats and see what's going to happen. Two combats happening and one of the great mechanics of this game is the choice that it makes you think about which force is going to attack first. Um, and I'm going to choose the... Dread Spears because they will probably get blended again by that unit if they even lose another six. 
you know, that's a significant blow to them. Whereas I think he can tank some of the wounds. He's got his Drake Scale skin and he's got his Ascetic Blood. So we're going to leave Karsten for now. We're going to do some pile-ins, which is going to be very simple and straightforward. Which is just that. Gets all of them within 2 inch range again. We're going to pick up some dice and we're going to roll them. 15 attacks going into those pain bringers, hitting on threes because there is more than 10 of them. And let's take out the five misses. Sixes are special, there's one six. Wounding on fours with the regulars. Not so good. Not so good. Four, and then the one at minus one. Doesn't win, so four saves, which are re rollable thanks to their shields. One wound goes through, one of those Mermidash Painbringers is wounded. Not enough, not enough. Another depravity point though, up to seven. Let's see what this Painbringer can do against Karsten. He's not a Painbringer, he's a Lord of Pain. It's a pain remembering these names in the Slaneshi army. Everything's pain and hell and striders and slayers and blah. Anyway. Five attacks with the Lord of Pain. He hits on threes. Sixes explode. No sixes. He wounds on threes. He fails to wound twice. So that is three wounds at rend minus one. Because he is a hunter of god beasts, that is his command trait. These are going to be three damage each if they get through. Carson has got a five up save. He fails them all. So that's going to be nine damage. So he has nine saves. Nine shrugs with his Drake skin cloak. And he manages to shrug four of them. So he's going to take five wounds, which on four ups will splash back as a mortal wound. And three will splash back, which then the Lord of Pain can ignore on fives and ignores two, and then they splash back onto Karsten, which he can ignore on fives, and he ignores one, and then it ends there, and I think that is right. So Karsten, in total, is taking six wounds, and the Lord of Pain is taking one from that attack. That was extremely complicated. I think I got that right. Yeah. Carson is going to attack. He's got his Exile Blade. He hits with it on threes. He hits three times. He wounds on fours. He wounds once. The Lord of Pain has got a four up save, which he fails. A five up shrug, which he fails. He takes another wound. He's down to two. Then we've got three attacks from the Fearsome Jaws hitting on fours. Two hits, wounding now on threes because he's damaged. One wound, rend minus two is a six up save. No, this is going to be d6 damage. For six, this could be it. Six shrugs, five up. Oh, he tanks it, he manages to save five of them. Which takes him up to four wounds. I beg your pardon. And then Carson ignores these splashbacks on fives. He ignores one, so Carson takes three more wounds. He's up to nine. This is a brutal combat. Absolutely brutal. And then we've got four attacks with the razor sharp claws because this all happens at the same time. These hit on fours, these wound on threes two wounds going to be saved on five ups nope four damage or four damage total two damage each five ups to save manages to save two but that will kill the lord of pain karsten saves these splashback mortal wounds on fives no he takes two he's got 11 my goodness that was brutal so that was brutal karsten flew in there and it was a bloody fight. He was showing off in front of Slanesh and another depravity point. And that is going to take the forces of Slanesh up to eight depravity points. They're not done. 
there's more attacks to be done over here more depravity points to be gained there is now nine attacks from this unit that hit on threes and sixes explode but no sixes that's only five hits wounding on threes that is four wounds at minus one on the dark shards or dread spears saved on fives three more fall one two three and that is another depravity point taking them up to nine depravity points so in their turn something will definitely be summoning summoned from the realm of chaos onto this battlefield but what will it be moving in to the battle shock phase nine depravity points now in total no battle shock here battle shock for the dread spears they've lost three and on a four is a seven they're going to be okay and these guys lost four his bravery is six and he is going to turn and run no depravity points for running but they are up to nine and the forces of slanesh look rather thin on the ground however Things can be summoned. Sigvald is still untouched and he looks ready to join in the fun. Karsten severely wounded. Karina currently unwounded. And the Dread Spears are in bad shape. But let's roll off for battle round three. Blue dice for Slanesh. Red dice for Karina. And Slanesh are going to take it. They are, could run away with this game yet. In the hero phase, the only thing to do is this shard speaker is going to cast a spell that he knows from the lore of Slanesh. It's not called the lore of Slanesh, but whatever it's called. And the spell is called Judgment of Excess. So if he gets this off, it will cause three mortal wounds to this unit of uh, dark shards because there's more than 15 of them. It causes a mortal wound for every multiple of five. It's really cool for horde units. Uh, of like 60 Skaven, I mean, that would be a really... A really devastating spell 12 mortal wounds anyway uh, this gets cast on a five and he fails so it doesn't matter after all that so with that done it's the end of the hero phase let's move on to do some movement and then we're going to do some summoning end of the movement phase sigvald has moved up shard speaker just done a little shuffle forward and a hell Flare has arrived, summoned from the realm of chaos, and it is going to charge forward into this poor unit of dark shards and no doubt blend them in those blades underneath. Carson is on his own over there, still in combat over here. In the shooting phase, this guy is going to use his ability, and on a 3 plus, this unit will be plus 1 to wound, and he gets that, so that unit is going to be plus 1 to wound. And now we're going to move into charges. Sigvold is going to charge. He's going to get a 9. Plus 3. Because he always gets plus 3 to his charge. is a 12 inch charge. So he's going to chuck chuck up in here. And then this unit is going to charge. Needs a 9. Failed. Using their command point to reroll. Still failed. Sigvald is in. He's going to get 12 attacks. A little bit of a backseat. Thought it was 12 um, because it's plus 3, but it's the unmodified charge roll because his charge roll was a 9. He's going to get 9 attacks. It's still not shabby, however, and Sigvald is, of course, going to attack first. And he is going to hit on 2s. And 6s are going to do an additional hit. So out of 9 attacks. He hits with 10. He's then going to wound on twos because this unit has got uh, minus or plus one to wound thanks to the Twisted Mirror ability. So wounding on twos, take out those ones. So that is going to be three, six, eight wounds in total. Rend minus two completely negates their save and it is D3 damage a time. It's going to be three, six, nine, and then four, eight, ten, nineteen. 
There is 19 of them there. Sigvold steps in and just completely blends through that unit. And no doubt Sigvold is just mocking right now. He is shining through this cavern. Is that all? Is that all you can bring me? There is a dark shard shaped hole right here. Now these dread spears are gonna attack back. They're gonna try and do some damage against these Myrmidish Painbringers, but Karina's forces are vastly thinning. Can she do it? Let's find out. 11 of the Dread Spears left, which is going to be 12 attacks, hitting on 3s, wounding on 4s, 6s to hit for special. There's 4 6s so far. Let's take out those. Uh, and then the regulars to wound. they are going to be 2 regular wounds. And then to wound, the minus 1, 2 at minus 1. So 2 4 ups re rolling. Both fast. 2 5 ups re rolling. Both failed, so that is going to be one slain and one wound goes over, but not enough. Now the Mermidish Painbringers are going to attack back, they've got two attacks each. Plus one for the champion, he's still alive, it's seven attacks, they're hitting on threes. They miss with a four, but they do get a six, which is an extra hit. They wound on threes, and that is going to be one mortal wound in addition, and then five to save. Four die this turn, taking them down to seven models left. Let's just do the battle shock now while they're here. Losing four plus two, their bravery is still seven. They're okay, but they're losing their buffs, they're losing their abilities. Those Mermidish Painbringers aren't going to lose anymore. And then it's going to be one, two, three more depravity points, which take the Slaneshi forces. Back up to five depravity points because this only costs seven out of their nine. Wow, what a force to try and beat. Let's see what Karina can do in her turn three. And the hero face is going to try and cast Bladewind and she's going to try and cast it on Sigvild. She's going to try and beat him with magic, seeing how devastating he is in close combat. Hitting on or casting on a six. Feels. It's not good. It's not happening. Let's go into the movement phase. End of the movement phase. Karsten, very wounded, can just flap flap that far. Karina's going for it. It's all or nothing. She's going to try and take on Sigvild. It's probably the stupidest decision she's ever made. But he has been tormenting her. He has been in her head. And now that he has slain her retinue, she sees red. She turns her dragon and she goes soaring towards him. This is make or break. This is what this entire campaign has boiled down to. Will she be able to take Sigvald out? She's going to try and Noxious Breath him first. Fail. That's it for shooting. She needs to charge. She gets a four. That's just enough to get in. She was within three of him. There's the little three inch widget to prove it. She's gonna just go slightly like that. And then of course Karina is gonna strike first before Sigvold gets a chance. All right, Karina's attacking. She's got her witch rod. She hits on a four. It misses. <laughs> She's got her witch lash, which hits on a three. She hits, she wounds. There's no rend. Sigvold has got a three up save. He passes it. Of course he does. Fearsome Jaws, four to hit. Two hits, one hit. Wounds on a two. It wounds, it's rend, it's minus two. Five up. Pass. <gasps> Six attacks from the Jaws. These hit on fours. That's not bad. They are gonna wound on threes. Four wounds is actually enough if Sigvold for some reason fails all of them. Four up save. Okay, okay. So this is going to be two damage each. So that's six damage. And then he's a four up negate. Of which he negates two. So Sigvold does take four damage. Okay, so she manages to go in and chip him. But she's just made him angry. And now he's going to strike back. 
Sigvald has got five attacks because he didn't charge. He hits on twos. And those sixes become two additional hits. Six hits. He wounds on threes. They all go through. This is six D3 damage onto Karina. That is going to be 12, 14 exactly. She dies. She is pierced by his blade and Karina is no more. And with Karina gone, the day belongs to Sigvald. The day belongs to Slanesh. The shard from the world that was this remnant of this ancient world who was tricking and whispering and deceiving his way into the mind of this elf, who, as we all know, is tied to Slanesh through the fall, managed to bring her in and she fell short of his challenge. Karina could not best the legend that is Sigvald. Her force could not overcome his insanely powerful retinue, even though many of his number died, and this is all that remains of the original force. Slanesh blessed them, granted them some demons who, although they didn't manage to join the fray, were still part of his force, and what a display of excess. Sigvald won. You cannot beat the shard of the world it was. And he will return now to the realm of chaos. He is championing his way through the realms. He is going through Hayish. He is going through Shayish. He will go through Akshi. He will go through Shimon. He will go through all the realms. Seeking a foe worthy to best him. Seeking a foe worthy to give him a decent fight. Sigvald hasn't found such a foe yet. At least that's what he tells people. And as for now, in the caverns of Shayish, a calmness will fall. Because there has been death in Shayish. And Nagash has been watching. So that is it for the campaign for the Shard of the World It Was. Thank you so much for watching, uh, if you stuck through it this far. Um, I really enjoyed putting it together, I really enjoyed playing it, and it has just increased my Age of Sigmar collection, which was kind of the main reason. So I painted forces to get them up for the battle report. I painted, this was the last force that I painted, which is 1,000 points of Slanesh. Um, I have 1,000 points of mortals, and then about 1,000 points of demons to go along with it. And that gives me uh, a well-rounded force coming into... 3rd edition, which is just around the corner, and I think by the time you watch this, the pre-orders for the Dominion box set, which is just the most amazing box set, one of the most amazing box sets the Games Workshop I've ever done, uh, should be out. So this is the swan song for this campaign, and it is the swan song for 2nd edition on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Speaking of the demons, I'll just show you a little sneak peek of what's coming up. We have got, of course, Slaneshi Demons. Because I will do another campaign, I will keep doing battle reports. I'm enjoying it, it gives me a focus for my hobby. So I've got some Slaneshi Demons, I've got the Lumineth that you've already seen, and some more Lumineth. I managed to get a copy of Cursed City, which really excited me. The Slaanesh forces that you've seen, and I've also got some Flesh Eater Quartz on the way. And they are also in that little box there, so some Flesh Eater Quartz. There's some Magakin, fully painted Magakin in there. There's some Iron Jaws, which will come to the channel again. And of course, Big Guy Archeon. But uh, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please give me a like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Boys me on to create more and create them faster. And yeah, there's nothing else left to say, but um, happy wargaming.